So there are quite a few components made out of round bar stock. Um, for example that one, that one, that one, that one. Um, and some are threaded and some aren't. So what I'll do is I'll make this one, number 14, and um, I'll do that on camera and the rest I'll follow exactly the same process but off camera. So first of all I'll face off this end. So now it's just a matter of putting a 7BA thread on the end of the rod for a length of uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch. Well I cut it slightly oversized with a hacksaw, put it back into the lathe, faced off this end to get it down to size, which is one and twenty-five thirty seconds of an inch and uh, now it's just a matter of putting it back in the lathe and putting a 7BA thread on this end which will be a quarter of an inch in length but I'll do that off camera well that was pretty boring uh, but I think I've made uh, most of the rods now this bent one here uh, connects up the, one of the eccentrics and what I did was I, I cut it to length first of all and I calculated that the length should be between 31 and 32 millimetres. Um, so I cut it to a 32 millimetre length. Um, then I threaded it and then I bent it. And I can see now that it's probably one millimetre oversize at this end here. Um, so I won't do anything with it now. Um, and when I get to assembly... I can then decide whether or not it needs to be cut down a bit. Well now I'm going to make item 16 which is um, like a threaded bolt with a hole through the head. And uh, this is made out of a piece of 3 16 mild steel bar. So I'm going to put it in the lathe and I'm going to turn this side down here to be um, 3 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. So it can be threaded to 7BA. Um, so the length of that thread is um, 5 sixteenths uh, with a, a bit of a relief cut out there Now I just need to part it off so it's uh, half an inch long in total. Well I need to uh, drill a hole through the head of this bolt. Now um, ideally if I'd have got one of those little drilling attachments you can put on the lathe on the tool post that would have worked a treat but I haven't got one of those. So I'm uh, holding it in a collet chuck and uh, I've centred it up so I'll just um, use this centre drill first of all just to uh, drill in there a little bit and then I'll use um, a 3 30 seconds of an inch drill bit.
well some of these uh, parts are getting quite uh, small now and um, I'm really happy with the way this has turned out using the Stevenson's collet uh, really enabled me to drill that hole through the head at true 90 degrees so I'm really happy with that result now off camera I had a go at making um, item 35 which I need four of and this is, this is the drag link uh, end and um, one end is threaded and there's a hole through the sort of like the head bit now I use the lathe to uh, turn it um, drill and tap the end and then I parted it off and then I went to the mill to drill the hole through um, but holding it in the vise I just can't get it at a true 90 degrees so I need to rethink that method so for the uh, drag link end I'm going to uh, tap 7BA for a depth of about 4 millimeters. so I've cut a little bit of a recess there just, just for looks really and um, it would be fantastic if I had uh, like a drilling attachment for my tool post because that, that would allow me to just be able to drill right through and then part it off um, but I haven't got one so what I'm going to have to do is to take the whole of this item out of the three jaw chuck put it um, in that Stevenson's collet block in the uh, same way I did that uh, nut and um, drill through on the mill and then bring it back here uh, to part it off on the lathe but I'll do all that off camera okay so I just thought I'd show you the method I'm using to center on the Stevenson's collet block so um, I've got this edge finder and if I bring the table take the table back until the edge finder just pops out there now if I go onto the touch DRO zero everything and then move to the other edge Bring the table back or forward until it just pops out. There you go. So if I now go on to the touch DRO, I can go into the y axis readings, I can set it to a half, and that tells me I've got to go 20.63 millimeters back to find the centre and that's the touch DRO gone to zero so I know now I'm spot on centre of that Stevenson's collet chuck uh, which will mean I'm spot on centre of the piece I'm trying to uh, drill through well that looks absolutely spot on very happy with that so just uh, three more to go crikey took a while to make those but I'm very happy with the result okay so off camera I've just made items 17 and 28 17 is like a collar and 28 is a nut and I'm, I'm not sure from the diagram but I think on assembly that goes like that but I, I could be wrong I'm sure I'll be able to work it out closer to the time okay so now I need to make the fork ends now there are two fork ends here which attach the expansion link and this fork end uh, attaches to, to the existing valve rod now the dimensions here are fairly limited but I know I need to drill and tap this end to 5BA to fit the existing valve rod now I've covered making uh, fork ends before in uh, 
video MT25 part 13 where I made the uh, valve rod for the 10V. Um, so rather than duplicate it all again, I'll make these off camera. Well, the uh, fork ends seem to have worked out okay. Um, these look pretty much identical. But, but I just can't understand why this one here, which goes on the end of the valve rod, um, why there's only one measurement of 5 sixteenths of an inch. Um, but anyway, I've, I've tried to work out what the dimension should be. In fact, I've changed the 5 sixteenths to 9 30 seconds. Um, and it looks okay. And uh, it seems to run okay in the expansion link. So, fingers crossed, it'll uh, work okay on assembly. So now I need to get on and make uh, two eccentric straps and one eccentric sheave. Now I only need one sheave because I'm going to use the existing sheave of the machine to mate up with this one. Now I covered the making of the sheave in quite a lot of detail in video MT25 part 12 so I'll, I'll make this off camera. So this is the sheave that I've just made and that's the sheave that I've, I've taken off the machine. Now that one's got a boss on it and this one doesn't. Now, I had a bit of a parting off nightmare where the, the um, tool dug in uh, when it hit this hole and it made a bit of a, a mess of that face. But I think we're okay because that face will face onto this one. Now what I need to do with each of these is to drill a hole that will take a little pin. Now, one of the holes, the hole on this, needs to be um, drilled at an angle of 60 degrees from this line here and at a distance of a quarter of an inch. So it'll put a hole down here somewhere. Now, uh, on this one, um, the hole will be 60 degrees above this line here, sort of round about there. Now, I, I've thought long and hard about this and uh, there's no way I can get a protractor on here and work it all out. Um, but I, I remembered that my father uh, told me, um, or taught me a rhyme um, uh, quite a long time ago uh, regarding trigonometry and how sort of angles equate to sides of a right angled triangle. And the rhyme goes, uh, some people have curly brown hair till pasted back. So, uh, some people have, so that's the perpendicular, hypotenuse. So, sine 60 is equal to y over 0.25. Sine 60 equals y over 0.25 and uh, curly brown hair so cosine is equal to x over the hypotenuse so x over 0.25 and the tangent is some people have curly brown hair till pasted back so y over x is tan 60 so with that in mind um, I've worked out what these sides should be so <clears throat> sine 60 equals y over 0.25 so sine 60 is 0 0.86602 multiply that by 0 0.25 and you get y is equal to 0 0.2165 likewise cosine is equal to x over 0 0.25 x equals uh, the cosine is 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.25 so x is equal to 0 0.125 so I now know that if I center my mill on this hole here, if I move the table, um, the x axis 0.125 and then the y axis 0.2165, that will give me the position to drill the hole. And likewise, on this one, if I just reverse that and do an x of, I think of, it would be y of uh, minus uh, 2165 I think. Need to think about that a bit more. Uh, but anyway, um, that's how I'll uh, drill these little holes 
which will then take a pin, I think the, the holes are about a sixteenth of an inch in diameter and then you pin them and that creates sort of like an offset at uh, 120 degrees or something like that but I'll do that off camera so that's the touch DRO set for the uh, sheave that I took off the little engine and uh, to hold the sheave in place I've used this uh, Stevenson's uh, collet block Well I've uh, drilled the holes for the uh, pin and unfortunately one was slightly out so what I ended up doing was uh, putting the sheaves onto this piece of bar and loctiting them on uh, in place and then uh, drilling right through from this end with a sixteenth of a, an inch drill bit and uh, that seems to have worked okay so what I've done now is just place them back on this bar and I've uh, just put this pin through with some Loctite on it and then I'll um, just cut it off with a, a little hacksaw. So for the eccentric straps I'm going to follow um, the same method I used um, in video MT22 part 10 when I was making the uh, Stuart S50. Now um, first of all I'll use a four jaw chuck and I'll centre it on these edges here. Then I'll face it off, then I'll centre drill, then I'll um, use a variety of drill sizes to get up to 14 millimetres in diameter. Then I'll use my boring bar to get it to 0.625 of an inch in diameter. Then I'll part it off to be 7 30 seconds wide, probably just a, a, just shy of that maybe. Um, then um, I'll drill and tap um, this for the rod, this for the set screw and this for the bolt. Then I'll use a slitting saw just to cut that out. Now I'll do all that off camera and like I say all the detail if you want to watch the video is MT22 part 10 for the S50. Well that's the eccentrics finished and I'm really happy with the way they've turned out run really really smoothly and this just leaves uh, one more item to machine and it's item 15 the reversing shaft bracket now um, this bit here needs to be uh, drilled and tapped to 7BA and there it needs a hole to be drilled 7BA clear but I'll do all that off camera well that seemed to go okay and uh, I hope you found the uh, video of interest and in my next video uh, I'll be covering the assembly so hopefully um, this little reversing mechanism will work see you in a bit mm -hmm.